What's up everyone, Steven here with Neural DSP. And today I'm gonna be taking a look at the tones and production used in the latest Artist Tones cover of Hysteria by Muse. Let's dig into it. So before we get into the tones and the production, I kind of wanted to talk about this track and some of the challenges that I faced while dialing it in. Now, the reason why I chose Hysteria is because this is a much more bass-centric track than a lot of the previous artist tones covers that I've done so far. And this one, it was particularly challenging because a, the tones were pretty difficult to dial in by ear, and then once you got the tones down, the really big challenge was getting enough automation into this track to make it feel as dynamic as I wanted it to feel. So first I'll go through the tones that I created, and then I'll go through some of the automation and production tricks that I used to really make this mix come together. So let's go ahead and start off with the bass. This was recorded by my good buddy Scott Moda, and he actually recorded this fingerstyle rather than with a pick, which means that there's a lot of notes being played fingerstyle on this track. So let's go ahead and listen to the bass in solo, and then I'll break down the individual layers that came to be the bass tone that I used for this track. Let's go ahead and start off with the processing I did to the DI before I get to the tones. I used Cornef Audio's Pawn Shop compressor on the warm DI preset, dialed in my threshold so that way I could control the dynamics of the DI. Then I pulled up Pro Q3 and I dipped out three kilohertz. And this was intended to take out the kind of pick, finger pick area. Let's go ahead and listen to it with and without the DI processing so you can hear what I'm talking about. First up, I have the low band on the parallax engaged, so I'd have my low end foundation of my bass compressed, clean, and ready to go for the rest of my mix. Moving up to the next aux where I split my bass DI into, I used the dirt pedal in the archetype Gojira, fed that through to the dark glass ultra. You notice that the distortion button is off, so I'm mainly just using the EQ section, and then the dynamic 906 as my impulse response. And for my main tone, I'm using the Dark Glass Ultra. The distortion's on, the drive is about at two o'clock position and no impulse response on this. So after dialing in my initial bass tone, I needed to look at automation and production elements to make this track very dynamic. Now you can see that I did a pretty aggressive volume automation here, right when the guitars come into the riff, but I also took an instance of Pro Key 3, and in the intro, I dropped the low end with a low shelf, and then automated it to come back up and bring in that low end again, right when the guitars hit. So it sounds like this. Now, if I bypass this instance of Pro Q3 and play that exact same thing, that guitar riff doesn't really hit quite the same because that low end really just isn't moving anywhere except for just with the volume automation by itself.
So that was a big thing when dialing in this mix was making sure that the automation of the bass, the drums, and the guitar really fit the dynamics that I wanted. I wanted that guitar riff to hit hard. I wanted the following verse to really kind of pull back and be a little less energetic. And I wanted the very end to be as big as humanly possible. One last thing to talk about when dialing in bass tones is when you are splitting your DI between multiple auxes to create your tones, you always want to make sure that you have high pass filters on just the tonal plugin. So my dark glass ultra, I don't need the low end from this because the low end is being supplied by my parallax. What I'm doing with my Pro Q3s is I'm filtering out the low end so that way the low end from the different plugins doesn't phase cancel. So moving on to the rhythm guitars, I used the Archetype Nollies third head and third cabinet. I used the Dynamic 57 and the Condenser 414 for my impulse responses, and I used the Overdrive 1 pedal to dry up the tone just a little bit, and then I used the Tone Knob to dial back the brightness just slightly. The delay and the reverb, I'm using a light mix just to fill out the space just a little bit, so that way it's not so forward in the mix. <laughs> For this verse guitar layer, I used the archetype Gojira because you can hear that he's using a phaser. So I thought that was a perfect opportunity to use the archetype Gojira's phaser, and it sounds pretty cool. Now there's this riff that leads into the bridge and the solo section. It's sort of a breakdown riff and it has phaser on it. So I pumped my archetype Nolly presets through to a separate aux with the archetype Gojira's phaser pedal just on it. So everything is going through the archetype Gojira's phaser in this instance. <laughs> Now I could have put the Archetype Gojira's Phaser before the Archetype Nolly on my guitar tracks, but it would have actually given me a much different effect on the tracks than if I put it afterwards. To show you guys the difference between having the Phaser before and after the Archetype Nolly, I'll go ahead and play them back to back and switch be between pre and post Archetype Nolly. Moving on to the lead guitars for my main tone, I used the Archetype Corey Wong's third head with the third cabinet, a condenser 414 and dynamic 57 for my impulse responses, compressor and big rig overdrive, and then delay and the wash reverb on as well. And then just underneath that, I actually put a second guitar lead layer. I used the Archetype Gojira's overdrive pedal, the phaser, second head with the third cabinet, dynamic 57, ribbon 160, and then the delay and the reverb on as well. For the final solo section, I took my original guitar track and I duplicated it twice and then pulled up instances of Archetype Gojira Put on the wow pedal in the fatso position with the toe up 
So that way I'd get an octave above my original lead track. And then for the impulse responses between my left and my right layered tracks, I changed the impulse responses between the two so that way I could have a wider stereo image between my octaves. So on my left hand side, I have the Dynamic 57 and the Ribbon 160. On the right hand side, I have the Condenser 414 and the Ribbon 121. <laughs> And that is how I created the Artist Tones cover of Hysteria by Muse. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Links to download the multi-tracks and the presets are going to be in the description down below. While you're there, leave a comment and let me know if there's an artist or guitar player you want to see me cover on this channel. And also, like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for notifications on when we upload new content to this channel. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.